Thanks, okay, Melissa. so the first thing is, can you see the screen is the first thing? Yes, the many uses of digital twins. <laughs> Perfect, good, good start, it's all going well. Okay, <laughs> so um, yes, yeah, so I'm, I'm going to take us right out to the really big picture um, to talk about use. So I'm really going to focus on the part of the use of the digital twin, um, because during COVID, um, the built environment got together um, to produce our vision for the built environment. Um, and this is the vision here. It's um, a vision where um, the uh, explicit purpose of the built environment is to enable people and nature to flourish together for generations. Um, and so when, when we're talking about the use case, for us, the use of the digital twin is, is to get those outcomes for people and nature so that they can thrive together for generations. Um, and then um, the way that we do that, how do we get those outcomes, is that we need to acknowledge that the built and natural environments are kind of complex and interconnected systems, which I'm going to explain a bit more. Um, and so, uh, again, our use case for a digital twin should be how do we intervene better on that system, uh, that's sort of the bigger picture. Uh, and then um, the understanding that um, if you put that together with the better outcomes and the systems, the bit that sits in the middle is the services. Um, so what I, uh, I think my other uh, amazing panelists are gonna talk about in a sense is are those services, it's the services for people and for nature. Um, and that's the thing that connects the two. So I'm just gonna very briefly just dive down into those uh, areas. So um, the outcome is um, at the centre of the built environment. So at the moment we do things like we build buildings or we have assets and that we do it in a siloed uh, way. Um, but actually the reason you're doing that is to actually um, improve um, outcomes for people and nature. And as you can see on this diagram here, it's showing that the use of that um, asset um, can go on for years and it can actually go on for hundreds or even thousands of years uh, but it's going to be over a long period um, and that period is longer than the period that it takes to build them so again if we're like a use case obviously it's great to use digital twins for um, construction and design and all the things you can see there um, but it's a real waste of the digital twin if it's not actually for the operation and maintenance as well um, and that's where you can get the biggest benefit um, and then on the right, what you can see there is that the outcomes, really we should be able to see an alignment through to the UN Sustainable Development Goals. So the idea is that that person that's hammering the nail at the bottom, that's kind of at the project or programme level, that they should see how they're helping to achieve community outcomes, how they're helping to achieve national outcomes, like for example, Net Zero by 2050, and how that's hoping, helping to achieve the UN Sustainable Development Goals. Um, and so again, with your digital turn, the use case for it, you know how, how far can you align through that and that that's that's what we should be really aiming for um so then just explaining what we mean by the system of systems so you've got the um social infrastructure which is like houses hospitals um schools then you've got economic infrastructure which is all the stuff in between it so it's the transport the water the energy etc and they're all inextricably linked but at the moment we all kind of manage them individually but they're actually all inextricably linked and then in nature, everything's inextricably linked and there's things like ecosystem services. And the built environment sits in the natural environment and they're inextricably linked. And now we're starting to have cyber physical infrastructure, which I think you're going to hear about coming up, and they're all inextricably linked. So that together becomes the system of systems. And as I said before, it's the services in the middle. You don't need a, a building, you need shelter. You don't need a bridge, you need to get from A to B. So that's really the use of a digital twin. We should be really aiming at that. Um, and the enablers you'll see here, amongst other things. So it's really important to remember that digital twins are just enablers, and there's lots of other factors, but you'll see <coughs> digital twins on there. So just as a reminder of what we mean by a digital twin, is that um, you've got the uh, physical asset and they've been used a lot in uh, Formula One, which is why this is here, so they were kind of the first. And there's data that comes from the physical asset and, and that goes into the digital model that you've got of it. Um, mm. But the reason it becomes a digital twin is if you then have it going back the other way with the interventions. So that data allows you to have insights. Those insights inform your decisions and then you therefore intercede better on the physical um, asset and that gives you your better outcomes so it's that the loop that makes it a digital twin as opposed to just a, a sort of a 3d model um, so if we take that for a carriage car on uh, so this is on a train now let, let's say we take that on a train and we've got our digital model of it there um, but then it's actually you know that train is running on a track 
and then there's also the signaling system and i think we all know the issues with signaling systems so um it'd be actually really useful if all of those digital twins could talk to each other so you're starting to talk about connected digital twins um, and you can see that the use of the digital twin will then like expand and you'll have much bigger benefits if you can connect them um, but then if you start thinking about well a train's usually going somewhere and let's say it's going to the airport um, and so really it would be great if we could start to connect across sectors the digital twins and so now we're starting to talk about a national digital twin um, and so again if you go back to that system of systems the biggest benefit for the use cases of, uh, of digital twins will be at that systemic level um, and uh, and again the biggest benefit will be if it's for the use of the mm. asset and the system and so what you can see here is how connected digital twins would work so you'd have digital twins with all the individual things and then you'd have like a federation of digital twins which would be a national digital twin and it would only be when they need to connect so it wouldn't be this one big twin all the time talking to each other this is when those need to connect to share data then there's an interoperable way for them to do that so i want to give you an example of that because you're probably thinking, oh, that sounds good it's a good idea or it sounds perfect you know theory but um, the climate resilience demonstrator known as credo um, has put that into practice so it's taken a, a global systemic challenge, which is climate change. And, and the only way we're going to resolve that is with systemic thinking and with uh, connected digital twins. And they enable that cross sector data sharing, which is what we need. Um, and uh, so Anglian Water, uh, BT and UK Power Networks all shared their data that would usually be private um, in order to understand how they could better respond to the impacts of flooding both preventative and, and after it's happened. Um, and um, I'm not going to talk about this, but this is showing, you know, if you want to have a look at it, this is kind of the, how the, the flow for how the digital twin would work. So, and I'm sure we can take the slides afterwards. Um, but the kind of things that they were able to demonstrate is that if an asset of um, UK power networks was knocked out by flooding, that would actually knock out Anglian Water and BT as well. Um, and so actually, that interconnection, you know, those two organisations need to be investing and communicating with uh, UK power networks and vice versa. So when you start to see the world like this, you can see that the, the use case for the digital twin sort of really amplifies. And uh, because they couldn't make that public, because it's um, obviously private data, they've made a simulation of it with, a, with an invented city. So you can actually go onto the Digital Twin Hub and, and actually have a play with this yourself and see if this area floods, you know, how does that impact things? Um, and they also made a film which shows um, what I've been talking about, that bigger picture, which is that why do we care? Why does it matter? So again, you can find that uh, film on the Digital Twin Hub and it's now just moving into the next phase. So if you want to follow uh, find out what's happening with that, you, you can you can find out what's going on um, because really this could be the first step on the National Digital Twin and we can just keep adding to it. And so and I'll stop there, come back to you. Wonderful. I think there was an awful lot of uh, interesting points in there. Um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to getting into them, some of them in, in, in the discussion.